Hey guys, Rob here. Today I just wanted to make a small video about blending colors in Photoshop. And I know there are tons of videos on the subject, but hopefully I can bring at least one important key point uh, to the discussion. So first off, the main thing that I want to bring to the attention of everyone is that you should try and enable blend color using Gamma in Photoshop. And I'll show you why. If we go into the edit color settings and bring in the window here, you can see I have blend RGB colors using Gamma enabled and set to one. If you have this option disabled and try to blend colors, this is the result you're gonna get, right? But then if you have this option enabled, and sometimes you might have this set to like 2.11, but it says it's best to leave it at one. So that's what I did. And now we try to blend the same colors again. You can see right away that there is a huge difference on how these two colors blend together. And that's very important in my opinion because you can see the transition in between it looks a lot more natural and there is the red peeks through the blue much more. So this is the first thing I would say um, if you don't have this option enabled, go there and enable it. Okay, so now for the actual blending. There are a few ways you can go about blending paint together. In Photoshop and probably the most common way to do that is using brush stroke and layer those together using opacity. So we can leave the opacity at 100% and just let the transfer in the option do the work. So again you just grab your paint and you keep sampling in the middle and just push and pull the color together to get the transition that you want. And of course, using different kind of brushes, you get different effects. So for example, if we grab this standard round brush, you're gonna get slightly different effects. And of course, the more, you know, textured the brush is you're gonna get an even like different effects. And this is cool because then you can control, um, you know, how the brush strokes work in your painting and all that kind of jazz. And, and I would say this is probably the most common and used one. What are some other ways we can go about blending paint? I would say another tool that some people use, but I would say the majority don't, is the smudge tool. And that's just because uh, it can get a little bit tricky to control. And with the smudge tool, you just place your colors and then grab the smudge tool here. If you don't have it selected, if you have blur and sharpen, just right click on it. And then what you're gonna have are a bunch of different options here. You have the mode, this is gonna apply um, you know, dark and light and based on the color that it's pushing or pulling. Don't worry about this. Usually you're just gonna stay on normal and that's it. Um, after that you have strength. So for example, if we have a very little strength, you can see almost nothing happens. So just a little bit more. You can see it's pulling the paint a little bit. If you have like 100%, it's just gonna push and pull the paint. But as you can see, it's not really blending the color, like you're pulling and pushing, but there's no blending happening. And that is because the brush that you're gonna use affects a lot this effect. So if you just add a little bit of scattering to your brush, like so, you can see immediately there's some blending starting to happen with these. And I kind of like this effect where um, the paint 
almost feels 3D because in the same stroke there is this kind of like gradient that takes also into account the background color and you can get a variety of effects based on the kind of smudge tool you're using so for example let's you have these lines you're just gonna have this feathering effect which is pretty nice or maybe you're just gonna have you know these blocks that create these kind of abstract clouds thing so I would say experiment with different shapes and different options in the brush and have fun with it. And the other thing about the smudge tool is this finger painting option. Um, finger painting basically what it does is based on the color you have selected, it's gonna introduce some of that color when you go in and smudge. So if I now start to do this smudging, oh wait, <laughs> forgot finger painting. So if you start to do, you see that it introduces some of that color, right? So if I picked like a green color and I keep smudging, it's gonna add a little bit of green to the mix, which is pretty nice. I mean, if you wanna have, especially at the beginning, maybe some color variation in your painting and you're just brushing in some some shapes this could be a great way to do just that and of course you have the sample layers but many tools of that you basically means that it's gonna sample of course all the layers not just the one you're in but since now we're just doing everything on a single layer it's not gonna do anything all right and for my last but not least way to mix paint we're gonna take a look at the mixer brush tool and probably I might make a different video just talking about this mixer brush tool because there are um, many options and if you never really used it it might be a little bit confusing um, but in essence what the, what the tool does is trying to simulate how realistic paint behaves and it doesn't do a super great job at it but it's pretty nice regardless um, here you have some preset for like dry paint, moist, wet paint and if you have um, the dry heavy load it's just gonna behave as a regular brush you know you pick the color you paint you know you just have your normal almost as if it was just a regular brush tool um, but there are several different options here so let's just take a quick look at it and see what they do flow is the same as the brush tool so if you reduce the flow it's just gonna output less paint as if your brush has less paint on it and this, this is pretty cool to get you know this kind of effects and then we have wetness like as soon as you have even just two percent of wetness see how it changes completely from the zero percent and the wetness it's actually what is good about this tool if you want to use it to blend color like this so you can just leave everything default and you can just add a little bit of wetness and then you can simply blend your colors together nice and smoothly I would say I don't use these super often but sometimes it's actually really nice because you know let's say we're doing a little sky sort of thing and then you just grab your white cloud color you just start blocking in your shapes and you can see even just with this little bit of wetness I can start blending this color nicely together it creates this very nice almost volumetric effect similar to what we've seen into the smudge tool and of course again like I mentioned if you have different brushes you get very different effects so you can see with this bristle brush you get some of those strokes visible into the transition and if you learn to control this uh, you can actually produce some very nice effects the only other thing I wanted to mention about this mixer brush tool is the ability to sample different kind of 
campaign. So for example, let's say we have a little bit of these abstractions of colors together. Now we're just sampling a color, but if we click on this little arrow and disable load solid colors only, and you sample, you can see just sample that bit of paint here. And when you drag, it's gonna create this crazy colorful effect. Now this might seem not too useful at first, but if you're trying to paint some texture, for example, um, you can just sample that kind of texture and then you repeat it and it creates some sort of like gritty, almost more realistic um, kind of feel to it. You see where like the colors bleed into each other, um, the brush is a little bit dirty. So it could be nice depending on, again, what you're trying to achieve. Now I would say these are the main uh, tools you're going to use for blending because you know you could use the eraser similarly with the brush just you know erase a little bit of paint stroke on a new layer but i think that becomes becomes very finicky um so i personally would stick to just these different ways to blend paint and i'd say this is it if you have any questions at all about this topic or any suggestion just let me know in the comment and yeah, even if you have ideas for new topics, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.